I sing good one time. Good morning to you. That's right. Good morning to you. It's a brand new day for music, and I'm ready to rock with you. Good morning to you. Good morning, children. My name is Mr. Luthor. I'm going to open us up in prayer today. Dear Jesus, thank you for this new day to be alive. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. Please forgive us for all of our sins and make us right with you. We welcome your Holy Spirit presence today. Please be here with us and meet with us. We want to know you more. Please help us to listen to your word, listen to your Holy Spirit's voice, and change us from the inside out to be more like your Son, Jesus. We also ask that you protect us and care for us as we go about today. We love you, Jesus. We worship you alone. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. job girls i love the energy of that song it's so much fun hey it's time for our memory verse with scripture squirrel can you say hello scripture squirrel hello everybody i'm so glad to see you today all right scripture squirrel what's our memory verse it's matthew 20 27 okay what what's it say and whoever wants to be first must be your slave all right what a powerful verse straight at you if you want to be first in God's kingdom, you got to serve. you got to be a slave to, to the people. That's right. All right, good job, Scripture Squirrel. Do you want to say anything else? Bye, kids. I love you. Good job, Scripture Squirrel. He's such a good helper. All right, our Bible verse today is from Romans, and it's from Romans chapter 6, verses 15 through 19. So check this out. This is Paul writing to the church in Rome. Let's see what he has to slave. say. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves to the one you obey? Whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, you have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You have been set free from sin and have become slaves to righteousness. All right, Paul is talking about a concept 
that's a little hard to understand. Um, our country, the United States, values freedom very much, and we were based on freedom. So we feel like we're very free people. We are free to do what we want to do, free to pursue the things we want to pursue, um, free freedom of speech, freedom to practice religion, freedom of expression, um, freedom to assemble, the right to assemble, freedom to bear arms. There's lots of freedoms that are built into the Bill of Rights and into our Constitution. So we're used to talking about freedom and used to being free in the United States of America. Um, but what what Paul's pointing out, and this is a subtle thing, it's, it's hard to understand a little bit, but you are a slave to whomever you obey. And this is how idol worship or idolatry works. Okay, that's a big word. Idol worship, idolatry, that's a Bible word. But what happens is whoever you give yourself to, whoever you give your heart to, that you become a slave to that thing. So this is how this works. Let's say you love... Um, let me pick something out of the air here. Let's say you love bird watching. You're a bird watcher and you love watching birds and you're part of the Audubon Society and you devote yourself to bird watching. Now bird watching is a good thing. God made birds, they're beautiful. We can celebrate how amazing and beautiful birds are. But anything, bird watching, uh, cartoon watching, cell phones, um, there's lots of things that can become an idol if they get out of balance and out of place in our life. So if you give yourself over fully to bird watching, you'll notice that you're giving money to bird watching things, that you are spending time and reading about bird watching things, that you are meeting together with people who love bird watching, and eventually it can become something that is consuming in your life to where you become a slave to that thing. Now that's that's a radical example. That's that's a broad example of taking something that's a really good thing and, it, and exploding it out. But it's true of what happens in our lives with the things that we love and the hobbies that we pursue. They can quickly become a master to us. And the trick about sin is when you become sinful, when you pursue something that is sinful, that God says is wrong in the Bible, like um, alcohol abuse, you know, drinking too much alcohol. That can become a master to you very quickly because alcohol is addictive and the feelings you get from alcohol can be uh, addictive. And so what happens is it becomes something that drives you more than anything else in your life. Pursuing the, the drinking of alcohol can become a master and you see people in life that ha that's happened to them. And you, you can see different versions of idolatry and different versions of masters in people's lives. Lying can become a master. When you tell one lie, you have to tell another lie to cover it up. And pretty soon you're, you're trying to remember all the lies you told and who you've told them to. Lying can become a master. All sin puts a person in bondage. And that's what Jesus is saying. When you are a slave to sin, you have to do what sin says. You have to obey the driving force of sin. But when you become a slave to Christ, you serve Christ and you do what he says and what he wants. And then you're no longer bound to sin. So this is talking about being called to serve. When you're a slave to righteousness, you're going to do what righteousness says to do. Those are things like going to church, reading your Bible, spending time in prayer, worshiping the Lord, and being responsive in worship. Not just showing up to be in a song service, but actually lifting your hands and singing the songs to Jesus and praising him. You become a slave to Jesus and do what he says to do, to serve the poor people, to give to missions, to um, serve the body of Christ in church and do the things that he's called you to do uh, as part of your church. So those are things about being a slave to righteousness. So you're going to end up being a slave to something and somebody. That's what the Bible teaches and that's how we are. We are worshiper people. So if you're going to give yourself to something like bird watching or alcoholism or lying or any of those kind of things, you will eventually become a slave to it. And if you give yourself to Jesus, you will be a slave to serve him. And that is what we want. That is where we will be most blessed because God is a good father and a good master and a good leader. So I encourage you to become a slave to Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this lesson. I pray that you'd help us to understand it in our minds and bury it in our hearts, Lord, so we can become slaves of righteousness to serve you so we can have the most fulfilling and blessed life possible. 
Please guard our hearts from serving anything else, serving anything sinful or any idol, anything that wants to take our attention and bring it away from you. Let us put those things aside and serve you instead. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's do our armor of God. All right, kids, it's now time to pray on our armor of God. Let's pray on each piece, one at a time. Let's pray for our Lord, please help us to put on our helmet of salvation to protect our thoughts and our minds against the enemy's schemes and plans. Let us rest in our salvation to know that we are saved by faith alone in Jesus. Lord, help us to wear our breastplate of righteousness today to guard our hearts from corruption and evil. Let us walk in righteousness and truth, Lord God, and have pure hearts. Lord, I pray that you help us to wear our belt of truth today, Lord God. Help us to, to speak the truth in love and to walk in integrity. Let integrity and a brightness preserve us today, God, in Jesus' name. I pray for the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Let us fight our battles with the Word today, in Jesus' name, God. We wear our shield of faith, Lord God. We put on our shield and we believe that you are God, that you are King, and that you are moving in the earth today. We trust in you and we block the fiery darts of the enemy. Whatever they may be, doubt, fear, confusion, chaos, strife, we block them all with our shield of faith. And last, we put on our shoes of the gospel of peace. This is where we walk in the gospel and we bring peace everywhere we go and we tell people about Jesus. Help us to wear our armor today. In Jesus' name, amen. It's time for our prayer journal for Wednesday, and we're going to pray for some nations that are on our heart. So I know you have countries that you pray for. Um, so at, ask the Holy Spirit for what countries he wants you to, to call out to the Lord for. And I'm going to pray for the countries he's put on my heart. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for the nation of Israel. Thank you for your holy people that you love. Please bless and protect Israel. Bless Jerusalem, your holy city. Bless and keep them, Lord God. Surround them with your angels and keep them safe from their enemies, Lord. I also pray that they would have wisdom uh, to lead their people, and I pray that the Israelites would love the Messiah, they would worship Jesus, and they would believe and trust in Jesus, their Messiah, to be saved, Lord God. I pray for the people of the United Arab Emirates. I pray your blessing and favor would be upon those people on that nation. Protect them and care for them, provide for them, and lead them to know Jesus Christ. Bless the Christians in that country. Help them to share their faith and share the good news so people can be saved. Lord, I pray for Afghanistan, Lord. I pray for the people in that nation to believe in Jesus Christ and be saved. I pray that you'd stop any persecution against Christians in that country and let them uh, be able to share their faith freely and let people be able to, to convert to Christianity and believe in Jesus there. I pray for the nation of Uzbekistan, Lord. I pray your blessing and favor on that nation, that the church there would grow and that people would believe and trust in you and know you more and be saved, Lord God. Bless Uzbekistan. Bless that nation. Uh, let the missionaries and the pastors in that nation thrive and prosper in Jesus' name. I pray for the nation of China, Lord God. I pray that for the underground church, that you bless them and multiply them, give them strength and fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Help them to reach many people for Jesus Christ and let that nation thrive in, in their faith and their love for you, God, in Jesus' name. I pray for the nation of Oman. I pray blessings and favor on those people. Let many people come to know Jesus Christ in that nation. Help Oman to uh, become a place where believers thrive and prosper and are filled with the Holy Spirit. I also pray for Guatemala that you protect and bless those people that come against the COVID virus in all these nations. I pray that you would cause it to diminish and reduce and save and heal the people that have uh, contracted it. Help it not to spread anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Spiritual Breakfast continues at 7.30 a.m. Monday through Friday. We're tracking through Leaders and Trainings Fall Session of Year One, and we're talking about the, um, the cross. Let me just show you this picture here. So this is what we're learning about. We're learning about how to be a daily disciple. The daily disciplines of a disciple are to, are to um, spend time in prayer, spend time in the Word. The Word is the bottom of the cross. Prayer is the top of the cross telling others on the uh, left side of the cross and serving and gifts and ministry and the right side of the cross, having the lordship of Jesus Christ in the middle of the cross and a life of obedience to Christ. So that's what we're learning about in this devotion every day. Right now we're talking about serving, um, being called to serve for this week. Um, next announcement, 
our Church Alive online online gatherings are 9 and 11 on Sundays, and our Kids Alive online gatherings 10 a.m. on Sunday, and it's awesome. It's really fun. I hope you're checking it out, worshiping along with us, and learning the Bible with us online. Also, in-person gathering 11 a.m. at Calvary Assembly of God in Anger. Um, right now, that's our in-person that we know about. And tonight at 7 p.m., Pastor Glenn will be on with any announcements and updates of other in-person gatherings or anything else that he needs to share. So be sure on Wednesdays to be checking out our, our Pastor Glenn announcements at 7 p.m. So those are announcements for today. Let's pray a blessing over you before you start your day. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and give you peace. May the Lord lift up the height of his countenance on you. May the Lord protect you and keep you safe from all harm and trouble. In Jesus' name, amen. that in everything 